Hi guys, in the previous lecture, that is the lecture number 27, we have covered all the previous year gate problem based on buck boost converter. Okay, in this way, we have completed DC to DC converter. Now in this lecture, that is the lecture number 28, we will start commutation circuit. So first we will know why commutation circuit is required. Okay, so if you have seen my power electronics introduction video, then there I divided the switch edge that the classification of switch edge on the basis of controlling in three categories. First one is the uncontrolled switch. Uncontrolled switch are those switch which uh, in which the turn on and turn off state cannot be controlled. It is depending upon the supply example is diode we have discussed in earlier lecture okay second is fully controlled switch in fully controlled switch the on state as well as off state both can be controlled example gto track and transistor family like bjt mosfet and igbt we have discussed in the introductory part of this power electronics lecture now the third one is semi-controlled switch. Semi-controlled switch are those switch in which only one state can be controlled either turn on or turn off. Example we have seen that is SCR. In SCR only we can control the on state by supplying gate current. This SCR will be on when we supply gate current means gate current not equal to zero. Now suppose if I want to turn off this SCR then it is not in my hand because it is semi-controlled. To turn off this SCR, what we can do? Either we can reverse the voltage pol polarity, means we can reverse the supply voltage. So if supply voltage will be reversed, that is VAK will be less than zero, then it will be in off state because it will go into the reverse blocking mode and it will turn off. And the second method is we will arrange a circuit that is we will make a circuit arrangement such that the anode current flowing in SCR must be less than or equal to holding current. Okay, there are only two methods to turn off this SCR. So we will talk about this. This circuit arrangement is done by commutation circuit. So we will see in this lecture about the commutation circuit. So if I have to define the commutation circuit, so commut commutation circuit is nothing but it is a circuit arrangement which is used to turn off the switch. Okay, so I divided the commutation circuit in two categories. First one is the natural commutation and sec second one is the forced commutation. Natural commutation is also known as line commutation. We will see one by one and forced commutation is again divided in four categories class A commutation, class B commutation, class C commutation and class D commutation. We will learn about these all commutation technique one by one. Okay. So in this lecture, that is the lecture number 28, we will see natural commutation which is also known as line commutation. Okay. So let us proceed to the first slide. What do you mean by natural commutation or line commutation? See, the definition of natural commutation is if the nature of supply support commutation, then it is known as natural commutation or line commutation that we have seen in rectifier. Let us take single phase half wave controlled rectifier in which thyristor is connected in series with load as and as well as supply. A supply Vm sin omega t that is AC is given. We have discussed this scenario in the previous lecture that is the lecture number 10a. Okay, we have discussed that. Now see here, when I will turn on this thyristor, a supply voltage Vm sin omega t is given and waveform it will be like this. When I will turn on this thyristor, this thyristor is triggered at an angle of alpha. Let us say this is the angle alpha. When I will trigger this thyristor, then it will be sorted and output voltage will follow the supply voltage that we have discussed in lecture number 10a. So output voltage will follow the supply voltage. Since R load is connected here, load is resistive in nature so output voltage and the output current both will be similar because it is a voltage stiff type of load in voltage stiff type of load the output voltage waveform and out, uh, output current waveform are similar so similarly i naught i can write that is equal to v naught upon r and it will be similar like this now see after pi supply is getting reversed right after pi, the sine omega t, you will get negative, means supply is getting reversed. The moment when supply will get reversed, this thyristor will go into reverse blocking mode. 
so when thyristor will go into the reverse blocking mode means thyristor will turn off means it will be open circuited and we want to get output voltage output voltage will be zero as well as output current will be zero so from pi to 2 pi i am not getting output voltage as well as output current so i can say that after pi line this line supply voltage is getting reversed which force this thyristor to go into the reverse blocking mode and in this case the thyristor will be turn off so here which one is responsible for turning of the thyristor this line that is the supply voltage or i can say that line voltage so line voltage is responsible for turning of this thyristor that's why it is known as line commutation or natural commutation got it application is rectifier we have seen in rectifier all the thyristors are commuted by using line supply voltage only and also it can be applied in ac voltage controller or cycloconverter these are the application of natural commutation or line commutation got it now see the second part that is the force commutation see this is the step down chopper we have seen in the previous lecture this is a step down chopper or i can say that this is buck converter so i can say that this is dc to dc converter in which input is dc as well as output is dc which converts fixed dc into variable dc now here i am connecting the switch okay this switch can be fully controlled or semi controlled it's in our hand suppose i am attaching a switch scr okay here scr is connected as a switch now i have to turn on this scr so to turn on the scr we have to give gate current but to turn off the scr i told you that either reverse the supply voltage or make the anode current less than the latching current but in dc to dc converter if we are connecting scr as a switch means the supply voltage is dc it cannot be reversed okay so here only one method can be possible that is the forced commutation in forced commutation what i will do i will arrange one circuit in parallel with this scr so that the anode current flowing in this scr must be less than or equal to holding current then only it will be turned off or either i can make the supply voltage this let us say this is a and this is k either i can make v a k less than zero by attaching one circuit arrangement so these type of no, uh, technique are known as forced commutation in forced commutation dc supply cannot support natural commutation see here dc supply cannot support natural commutation because it is fixed and it is the polarity of voltage is not getting reversed so we have to use commutation circuit to turn off the devices so these type of commutation circuit are used in chopper as well as inverter see in chopper also the input is dc as well as in inverter also input is dc so we cannot reverse the supply voltage that's why line commutation or natural commutation is not possible so we have to use force commutation technique in order to turn off the scr so that's all about this lecture in the next lecture we will start force commutation in which we will see class a commutation that is the load commutation so before studying force commutation i would like to tell you that you should go through lecture number six that is the part a and part b that is the diode circuit okay first go through this lecture because the concept explained in this lecture will be used in the force commutation that's why i'm telling you you should go through lecture number six there i derived the inductor current il of t that is equal to icp sin omega naught t where icp is equal to vs under root c by l this is nothing but discharging lc circuit in which we found the inductor current that is equal to this and omega naught is equal to 1 by under root lc so i will be using this equation in force commutation so i will not derive there because i have already derived in lecture number 6 that is the part a and part b so go through this lecture then proceed to the lecture number 29 okay if you guys understood the concept then please like this video and subscribe to this channel for doubt solving you can join our facebook group thanks for watching this video